Joined here today by Army West Point Director of Athletics, Mike Buddy. Mike, thanks for spending a few minutes here today. Yeah, absolutely, Rich. Appreciate you doing this. Great to see your face, man. And great to see your face as well. And obviously, what we're going through is unprecedented with COVID-19 and really the climate, everything going on. What's your new normal as Athletic Director at West Point? Well, surprisingly, my new normal is not that much unlike my old normal, which is there really isn't a normal. Uh, but certainly, uh, everything's a little bit different now. So uh, one, of the, one of the great aspects of being here at the United States Military Academy is I'm getting a, a great crash course in Leadership 101 in how to deal with pandemic. Uh, my new normal is to learn a lot, not about just uh, the installation here at West Point, um, but to, uh, to communicate. You know, I'm a I'm a face-to-face -face person, so it's been odd doing all these Microsoft Teams meetings and Zoom meetings. But uh, the new normal for me is uh, is creating ways and, and making sure that we we find ways to keep our cadets connected, keep our coaches connected, keep the, make sure that morale is uh, not suffering too much. We've all had something taken away from us that that we've committed our lives to doing, and so just really trying to to keep uh, keep people's fears down, uh, but also make sure that they understand the gravity of the situation that they're. They're being safe and keeping your family safe. And you talked about, Mike, how you like the face-to-face -face communication, what your new normal has become. What has your interaction been like with staff and coaches? So we start every day with the, our senior leadership team meeting. Um, we do that uh, by FaceTime. There's about six of us that are still coming to the office every day. Um, so we'll, we'll use the conference table and, and spread out uh, at each corner. Uh, and we really, we spend that morning kind of planning what needs to be done that day, what are measures that we can take. Um, and so we've got a group that's checking with our cadet athletes, making sure that their, their health and well-being is taken care of, making sure that, that they have the things that they need to, to succeed uh, with online learning. Um, and then we interact, um, for, for, in, in my, my position, I interact with the academic board at least once a week to make sure that, that our firsties who are, are scheduled to graduate are, are keeping up with that work. And so, um, and then we end every day at about five o'clock with another video call where John Wojciech from our our, uh, our military branch of the athletic department kind of updates us on what's new with, with COVID-19. He gives us um, pointers and tips and, and just a dose of, of facts that we can take home and, and make sure that we're keeping our community safe as well. You talked about the cadet athletes. There's been a lot of talk. The NCAA vote yesterday about an extra year of eligibility for spring athletes who had their seasons cut short. It's different at West Point. You put out a tweet last week in regards to that, can you explain for the fans how that eligibility is, is different here at West Point? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we do compete in Division I athletics, but obviously our mission uh, is quite unique. Uh, we share that with our, our brothers and sisters at the Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy. Our kids don't get a fifth year, um, whether they've, they've broken a leg um, or, you know, fallen behind in, in their academics. We, we keep them up and we make sure that our, our model is it's a 47 month journey from your first day here at our day until you walk across that stage. And then you're, you're commissioned into the uh, United States uh, Army. So uh, that doesn't change um, just because we've lost a season due to COVID. I, I feel, you know, it, it's, it's crushing for our senior athletes as it is for any other school in the country, but getting a fifth year here at the, at the United States Military Academy isn't really an option. And, and to their credit, our kids are heartbroken, but, but they're, not, they're not fighting that. They understand what they signed up for. They're ready to go serve their country. They're excited for that opportunity, uh, which, which makes me feel great as their leader. Um, but it's, I'm, I, you know, I'm just as crushed for our wrestlers you know, seven, seven young men who are going to the NCAA championships, our hockey team who had had a magical season and was getting ready to, to keep that, our baseball team that was picked to win the league, you know, so on and so forth, our lacrosse programs. But um, our reality is different than a lot of schools, and we accept that reality. And our kids are mature, and they've, they're, they're good enough leaders that, that they'll move on and um, take it as a life lesson. Mike, we talked about your new normal at work. What's your new normal at home, whether it's working out, spending time with your family? How is all the climate right now affected that? I, I I'm doing a lot more laundry and dishes, I think, than I normally do. Um, I also have a 19-year-old bearded wonderkind who's living in my basement right now. He's supposed to be a sophomore in college. Um, but it's actually, you know, I, I joke about that. It's, it's awesome to have your kids under one roof um, and, and a little bit more unplugged than they normally are. Um, I've got a 10th grader and a sophomore in college, and they're both doing online classes right now. But but getting to sit down at dinner and having us all there um, has been has been great. Catching up on a lot of Netflix, a lot of podcasts, um, 
actually getting a chance to exercise a little bit more, which which is important to me personally. But um, yeah, you know, getting to listen to some new music. I, I got this great new country artist that I've I've really taken a shine to. His name is Joe Exotic. He's got nice. the voice of an angel. Hey, you find out different things about your interests and your likes here. So I'm catching up on movies at home. We're trying to get movies in the queue. I want to get for love of the game in that queue for my wife and I to catch up with. Wonderful film. Top anecdote from working on that film with Kevin Costner. Who? Um, so there's there's a couple that I probably can't share, um, but but one that I can share. So, you know, for for anybody, the, the three people that are watching who who may not know. So I was I was the uh, New York Yankees starting pitcher who pitched against Kevin Costner in the film, and I served as his kind of quote unquote pitching coach, um, if you will. But I had to shoot a scene where the um, Costner's best friend on the team was his catcher, character named Gus Sinsky, played by John C. Riley, who a uh, wonderful, phenomenal actor, great guy. Not the most athletic person that has ever uh, taken the silver screen by storm. And, and we had a scene where Gus was supposed to hit a double into the gap off of me. And so we were shooting at Yankee Stadium. It's 37 degrees and, and drizzling. And my job was to throw pitches fast enough so that it would be close enough to take for a major league pitch, but slow enough so that John could make contact and, and just hit the ball somewhere. And then we could do, you know, use the magic of computer generated images. And uh, about an hour into it, we, we kind of learned that the only way he was going to hit it is if I threw it too slow for it to be realistic. Um, some of my teammates behind were just saying, you know what, just tell John C. Riley to swing the bat and Mike will just throw an 80 mile an hour fastball and hit his bat. And basically that's what we ended up doing. But you can imagine coming off a full professional baseball season, by the, t by the end of that day, after an hour and a half of throwing baseballs, my shoulder, I thought my career was over because I'd thrown so many pitches. But um, it was great to see that come out on the big screen. And that was about three tenths of a second of the movie and took, took us two hours to get done on tape. I'll, I'll watch out for that when, when I do tune into the movie again. Well, Mike, thanks for so much you're doing, taking care of cadet athletes, staff, coaches. There's a lot of Army fans out there. They can't wait to be at Mikey Stadium in the fall. Come out to West Point to enjoy any kind of sporting event. What message do you have for the Army fans at this time? Um, really, Rich, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a message of appreciation. I, I think that uh, when I talk to our coaches, I talk to, we have a video call at least once a week, and I say, you know what, if nothing else, we just all got a big reminder of how much we love what we do. And when that's taken away from you, I know I think – I think a Grammy winning band uh, that you probably have heard of named Cinderella yeah. from the eighties, right? You don't yes. know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> so you apply that to our fans. Like we, we miss it. I know that they want to come see our kids compete, but our coaches and our cadets are all getting a nice dose of, we really love what we do. And when, when the, the fog has lifted and we're back, these fans who we appreciate now more than ever, we need you to come back. We need you to bring some friends with you and celebrate the things that, that we may have taken for granted. Well, Mike, thanks as always for a few minutes. Look forward to seeing you soon in person, face-to-face. -face. Yes, sir. Stay safe, buddy. Appreciate you having me on, Rich.